welcome to Country Basket Weaving. I'm Sandy Atkinson. The basket we've chosen today is our Stephanie basket. It's a coil basket, has a nice coil bottom on it. You're going to need to have your cut pattern and your material, and it is as follows. You're going to need number five round, cut ten pieces that are 48 inches long, number three or number four for our weavers, quarter inch flat, it'll look much better if you use dyed reed, and you're going to need a skein of yarn. So I already have mine cut. They're in the bucket soaking. And I'll show you an easy way. We need to mark our centers on all these pieces, but to save you a lot of time, line up your tops of your cut pieces here. Line them up so we have them all even in here. Find the center by putting these ends together up here. Find your center down here. And then take your pencil and draw a line across all of them. That's going to save you a lot of time. Now you may have to shift them. Make sure you get all the pieces with a line on them. That'll save you much time. Pick out five, separate them, and we're going to overlap them. I'm going to put them down here on the table. Then I'm going to go get a number three or four weaver. I've already got those soaking. This is number three or four, and it's round, of course. Undo it here. It does get tangled in the water. Take a minute to untangle it. Okay, you're just going to need one end to do this. And what we're going to do is come to this one here because this is an under. This is the one that's laying under. And I'm going to pick it up and lay my weaver underneath it. I'm going to go around catching these five. They're in groups of five. So I'm going to weave around catching all the four groups of five. And I'm going to do this for about three rows. Pull this through. Tighten it up. Keep this circle nice and round. Because again, this is the beginning of your basket. And if you don't keep it round, you'll end up with a lopsided basket later. I know this is a lot to work with. One more time around. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to go into a Japanese weave. And a Japanese weave is over one, under two. So I'm going to pick this one up here and I'm going to go over it. Then I'm going to pick up my next two, and you must keep them in sequence and keep them laying flat, and I'm going under two. Let me get this out of the way here. Okay, over one. Pack them in tight. Pack this row of twining in tight. Under two. This first couple of rows are going to be the most difficult. Over one, under two. Come over here and pick up one. I have to go over this one. Under two. Get my fingers out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Over one. Now I have to come over here and pick up one from this group to go over these two. Over one. Under these two. Keep right on going with this pattern. Come back here and work it. Give it a tug. Pull it in tight. Over one. Now I have to pick up these two over here. Now if you see, I'm back to where I started and I'm picking up a different two. So every time you go around, you're going to be picking up a different set. But follow in sequence. Pull it in tight. Over one. Now I'll be going under these two. Now I have to come to this side and get this. And as I work, it'll start spreading itself out. My little girl calls it her sunshine when I do this basket because it looks like the sun rays when I get going here. Here, pull this line around. I like to work with long lengths because then I don't have to stop and start so often. So that's why you'll see me use a lot of long lengths. Keep that a nice circle. Under two and over one. 
Just take your time. You want to do a nice job. And it's much easier to take your time and do a nice job than have to go back and start again. Pack it in tight. That's what I'm having trouble doing. Go back and pack it in tight. I want you to continue this weave until it measures eight inches across. And you're going to keep packing it in tight. Over one, under two. And once you get going on it, you'll, oops, just a minute, made a mistake. Okay, went under, over one, under two, over one here. Back up. Keep doing this weave, like I say, until it measures eight inches across, which I have already done here. I'll move this one out of the way. This one I have eight inches across. And it'll expand itself out. It'll spread out. All these spokes in here will spread as you work. Let me turn this one over. Then as you can see, this is my over one and my under two. Over one and under two would be here. And then let's measure this out. Make sure I have eight inches across. I have about seven and a half, so let's pick up some weavers and do a little bit more weaving. Probably a couple more rounds is all it'll take. Okay, to insert a new weaver, which I know you'll have to do, it's very easy. Pick this one up, lay this one underneath, hold it with your finger and continue the same weave and just keep right on going. Over one, under two. Spin this as you work. Once you get out a little ways from that center, it is much easier to work and it'll go very fast for you. Just continue this pattern until you have eight inches across. Then, because we're going to be working with this tail here. Okay. Because we're going to be working with this in a coil, we need an odd number of spokes. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and take more of our number five round. Take your knitting needle. Pick out some spots on here that have a little more distance. You'll notice them in here. Like here's a good spot right here. See the distance is a little more than here. Go in here with your knitting needle and open up a spot and slip in this number five right next to the other one. Bring this out here and give it a clip equal to the length of the weaver, or the, pardon me, the spoke that's already there. So you need to add seven of these. So go all the way around the basket. We're going to add seven. Kind of play with it and give two or three, four spokes between them. There's no certain pattern to follow. Open it up with your knitting needle. Stick that new weaver in there. Pardon me, new spoke. I keep wanting to call them weavers today. Work your way around the basket. And again, you're going to add seven, and that's going to give us our odd number, which will allow me to continue weaving around the basket without stopping and starting each row. That one's too short. Let's get another piece here. Open it up with your knitting needle. A lot of my students will think when I first start class, why in the world do they need a knitting needle for a basket weaving class? But as you can see, we use it a lot. Okay, let's go back and count them. I think I need one more. Four, five, six, one more. Okay, so I'm going to find a place here to insert one more, and then that will be my seven. Now we're going to do just a twine, just a simple basic twine. We've been over this before. Come back to where you've left this piece hanging, this weaver hanging here. Take out another 
of your three or four, whichever you're using. And we're going to come back here. Now, I can get a shot here. Okay. This is where my old piece is coming out. This is a spoke. I'm going to lift up this spoke, insert the new piece. So they're coming out of two different sections here. Then I'm going to do a row of just plain twining. As I come to my spots where I've added a new spoke, I'm going to twine them separately. Twine each one separately. Because now at this point they're considered two spokes instead of one. And again this tangles as I work this row around. Come back and untangle it. A new spoke, so I separate them. This will take me a minute to get around. Then what we're going to do is pick this whole thing up and work with it next to our tummy again so that we can start arching those sides downward. Almost there. And straighten this back out. This really gets tangled. Okay, back to where we started. One more twine. Then we're going to pick it up and work with it next to our tummy. Got that first row in. Now pick it up here. As you push this side down in here, you're going to work with your arm and your hand and push this side down. And you're going to continue this twine for about two inches. It's going to go two inches up the side. Now mine is all tangled here, so I need to take a second, come back here and untangle this. Then I can continue weaving. Okay, back up against the tummy. Continue twining this around. Just take your time, work it down. Keep moving it, working it down. And again, and you're going to work this until you have about two inches, which I've already done on the next basket. And as you work this, you're going to build those sides up so that you end up with it arched up here. And you don't want a real quick arch or a real quick turn. You want it kind of just to roll up there smoothly. Let me straighten this one out. It's been stuffed in my bucket. Now we're going to take our dyed quarter inch flat and we're going to take our scissors, put a taper on here, just a slight taper. Oh, probably two inches, inch and a half, two inches. Then starting anywhere on the side of the basket, we're going to take this piece, make sure we have the right side out. We always want to keep conscious of our right and wrong sides. My right side's here. I'm going to start this piece underneath any spoke and I'm going to weave around. It's just a simple over-under pattern. This will go faster for you than the twining. But don't try to speed your work. Take your time at it. Anything worth doing is worth doing well. And we're going to keep on going. Now, when I come to where I started, let me separate this so you can see. This is where I started my piece here. This piece is coming around. That's because we added those seven spokes and we have an odd number. Now I'm able to just keep right on weaving. I'm going to re weave about four rows. Made a mistake back here. One thing about it, you can catch a mistake real fast. Okay, you're going to weave about four rows. I've chosen a dark brown in here on this basket. After you have about four rows, we're going to add our yarn. And what I've done, I'll explain the yarn while I work on this. Do you remember the old 
spindles they used to have where they, they would work the yarn around and end up with like a tube of yarn. Well, that's what I've done with this. My daughter Gwendolyn did it for me, and she hand wove it. And she has tried to teach Mother to do it, but Mother just is too busy to sit down and learn it. So I let her do it for me. But that's what she did with some hand weaving. But I understand you can do it on a spindle too. And that gives your yarn some depth because if you were just to take some yarn, I have to add a new piece here. If you were just to take some yarn, it would take you forever to weave it in and out this basket because it's so thin. Okay, right side. Now we're going to overlap four. We're always going to end our piece on the inside. I know this is kind of dark. And we're going to overlap four and then keep right on going. Almost to my four rows. I have a blue yarn to work in with this. I think that'll be pretty. Okay, I'm back to my four rows. I'm going to take this end and just taper it down. And it's going to end under. Make sure you end it under. Now, I've taken my yarn. Here's my tube of yarn. I've knotted one end so it won't come unfrayed. I'm going to stick it inside the basket and hold it with my finger and just simply weave Continue weaving, weaving it over and under. And because I have so, this is so thick, it's going to fill up quickly and that's what we want it to do. When I finish weaving this in, and you can put in as many rows as you like, oops, back up, okay. Now when I come back here, I'm going to be weaving just the opposite the way of where I started. But it'll do that automatically. When you finish your rows here uh, with the yarn, then you're going to put in four rows or how many rows. If I put four down here, I probably should put four up here. If you put six down here, put six at the top of it. So whatever you choose. I wouldn't go much more than six because then you're going to run out of length for the top braid. Okay, you're going to weave that around, continue going. That's really pretty with the blue and the brown together. Now, this one I already have done. I've got my, I've got my uh, colored reed down here and my yarn and up here I have, I think I've put in five rows in this basket. Now we're going to do twining again. You're going to need some number four or three, whichever you're using. Remember how we found those two ends before? We had different end lengths. That's what I want this time. Two different end lengths. Draw it up and find the middle. Take your needle nose pliers and put a crimp in it. That's so it'll bend without breaking. Starting anywhere, you're going to loop it over one of your spokes. I have yarn all over my fingers. Okay, and we're going to twine. As you twine, now this is the same pattern, same thing we've done before. It feels different because you're working up here instead of down on the table. The one on the left is on the top. It's going to go behind the next spoke. Makes this one on top to the left, and that's going behind the next one. Always the one to the left will be on top, and you're going behind the next spoke to the right. Now, if you're left-handed, go ahead and reverse the pattern. It works just as well. Anything can be reversed in basket weaving. And you're going to twine. Again, I have twined on the top of this for about two inches. This is an overlap. Tuck it back in if it comes untucked. You're going to have to straighten this out as you work. Can you see the contrast of colors? This basket you would not want to stain because of the yarn insert. Not because of the color. When you stain over a color, it makes it antique. It's very pretty. But because of the yarn, I wouldn't want to. Go ahead and do this. Continue doing this until you come up with about two inches of twining, like I have done on this one here. Now we're going to get into our Gretchen braid. Take your needle nose pliers and Put a crimp on every spoke right where it 
the twining ends. So right down in there tight. By the way, to end your piece, after you have twined, simply put both pieces to the inside of the basket. We'll go back later and trim them. Okay? We've already done the crimping all around the whole basket. Taking two spokes anywhere together, take the one to the left and take it behind. Pick up one spoke to the right. That will give you two again. Take the one to the left and put it behind. This is the first step to this Gretchen braid. Pick up the one to the right that gives you two spokes again. The one on the left goes behind. Pick up the one. The one on the left goes behind and they're going to the outside. That crimp makes them bend without breaking. Pick up the two to the right. The one on the left goes behind. I'm going to work this a little faster now. Picking up that new spoke on the right each time, taking the left and putting it behind. Work this pattern all the way around. You're really working with two, uh, pardon me, three spokes. You're working with two in your right hand. The one in the left is going behind. Take me just a minute. I'm almost finished. Okay. When I come to the end, these are my last two. I'm going to take the one to the left and it goes behind. That leaves me two up here. You're going to need your knitting needle. Come over here. This is the very first one here that I put behind. I'm going to raise it up. This is loose, so I won't need my knitting needle after all. Take my spoke to the left, and it slides underneath that one and comes to the outside. I have one spoke left. I have a hole here. This is the second one that I laid down when I began. And this spoke is going to insert in there and pull through. Now they're all the same, and they're all going around. I kind of push them down. Make sure they're ready to continue. Okay, going to the side and starting anywhere. Pick up two spokes. Come back to the left and pick up the one on the left. And take it behind and down. I'm sorry, let me do that again. Take it in on top of and down. And hold it with your finger here. Come over here and pick up the next spoke to the right. Take the one to the left goes on top and down. Again, hold it with your finger. Pick up the one to the left, the one to the right. Take the one from the left, bring it across and down. Pick up one and one goes down. The right you pick up, the left one comes over and down. You're going to work this braid all the way around. The same pattern. When you get over to the other side, we have to do the very same thing we did. We have to find those two empty spaces to slip those two last two in. Now, if you wanted to do this Gretchen braid longer, then cut your spokes longer. These were cut 48 inches. I can probably do three or four of these braids around the basket. If I wanted to do more, simply cut your spokes, say, 55 inches long. Okay, I'm back to where I began. I have two left. I'm going to come across here and pick up. Right under here is where this next one goes. This is the next spoke. Come up here and open it up. Pick up the one to the left and slide it through there. I have one left, so there must be one hole left. It's right here, right by the next, the crimp on the next spoke is where that's going to slide down into. Okay, we can go around one more time. I have enough. This braid curls, kind of curls around the basket and comes down and works its way over this twining we have here. So if you want it longer, just cut your, your spokes longer. Starting anywhere, pick up three. The one on the left goes be on top and down. Pick up the next one. I'm going to do this a little faster. 
always picking up a new one on the right and the left ones on the far left is going over and down. Work my way around. I'd like to get this to the end so I can show you one more time how to find those. Sometimes you have to look for those last two holes to slide these two into. Hold it with your left hand. Hold these down because they want to pop back up out. This is called a Gretchen braid. Okay, I'm at the end. Come in here. This would be my next empty right there and this one's going to slide down into it. One more. This one's coming on top. It's going to slide down in here. Okay? Now we're going to do the finished trim on the basket and take your scissors, bring them at an angle and come down here and just trim these pieces off, these spokes that are, are hanging out left over from our weaving. And while you're down here, you can also trim up our twining at an angle. Be careful you don't get these too short because they will pop out. The basket we'll be working on in our next session is our egg basket. This one has some seagrass on it, but we'll be working with flat um, reed. And I'll be looking for you to see you then. Thank you.